Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Welcome back, Jeff. I forgot what you look like. It's good to see you. It's been a while. <laughs> Pastor Sue, if you're out there and watching, here's, here's something you haven't heard in a while. Jesus loves you, and there's nothing you can do about it. You remember that. <laughs> if you're able, would you stand, please, and join me in our opening prayer? Dear Lord, you have shown us the way that you love the world through Jesus' kind words, acts of mercy, and precious sacrifice. As your beloved children, kindle in us the many ways that we might show our love to you, whether in our time of worship, our care for one another, or in acts of loving service to the world. Teach us to recognize Christ in everyone we meet. Help us to offer ourselves in service wherever it is needed. And free us from our fears of scarcity that we may share from our abundance and be a blessing for others. Amen. Our opening song this morning is How Majestic Is Your Name. It's in the faith we sing, number 2023. And it's on the board. Singing, everyone. I invite you to be seated. It's great to see you here in church. It's great to see you online. It's great to see you anytime. Uh, so I was glad to see us uh, opera coming together to worship the Lord together. If you're online, I invite you to mark your attendance, saying hello and connect with others who are there. Uh, for those of you who are here, if this is your first time with us, I would invite you to fill out the white welcome card that is in the pew in front of you. If you have any specific prayer concerns or ways that we need to be in response to you, there is a yellow prayer card that's on the way in. Uh, those are for that purpose of helping me as a pastor and as the prayer team to be able to respond to the concerns of the congregation. So I invite you to make use of those. If you didn't grab one on your way out or way in make sure you do so on your way out if you need to use those um, a few things going on in the life of the church I uh, want to make sure you're aware of is that we are putting together a photo directory for the church. Um, if you don't like your picture, talk to Lisa. She might be able to negotiate you with you for a certain price for your prom photo or whatever picture you want to put in there. Uh, just let her know which way that will work. Um, also note that uh, as uh, we are making some transitions as a church, we are looking for your participation. Uh, lots of different, ki different kind of ministries that are happening here, particularly for greeters and ushers and those on the media team are looking for new members. And if uh, you haven't had a chance to sign up, you might just get contacted by, my, by me anyway. Uh, so just glad to be a part of that with you. Also note that uh, we are gearing up for Vacation Bible School. It's an exciting time as we connect with children in our community, and uh, Charlene is helping to put that together. Uh, you'll note the dates there on the screen. If you have children or grandkids that you'd like to send this way, uh, please make a note of that. You can register through the website, which is kind of an exciting thing to note, uh, so be aware of that coming up. 
And uh, Charlene does have an announcement for us, so I'm going to invite her to come up as we, we do that. Yes, I do. Lisa asked me last Sunday, she said she wasn't going to be here today, you if I would make the... Mic. Gotta go to the mic. Oh, can't you? You can obviously hear me. Online. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, sorry. I forget about this online stuff. Okay. <laughs> um, next Sunday, as I'm sure you all know and everyone knows, uh, we'll be past, and I hope I can get through this. <laughs> we'll be Pastor David's last Sunday with us, and we will be having a big farewell dinner and celebration of the time he spent with us after church. Everyone is invited, even those of you out there that I can't see. Um, and I know there are Pam and Ruthie have been working on the menu, and I'm sure that a lot of our other wonderful cooks, like Elaine and everyone else, is involved. And I did notice in the newsletter it said it was a potluck dinner, but my understanding is it is not. So don't let that hold you back. You don't have to bring your own dish. <laughs> um, Isn't that nice to all have to cook? Yes, I love that. I love that. Um, so please come and join us. And I do have one other announcement that I'd like to make because, you know, things have changed over the COVID years, as we all know, and some things kind of fall through the cracks. I know that actually next Saturday is graduation Saturday for Patrick and others from Woodsville High School. Yesterday I attended my granddaughter's graduation in Littleton. Um, so we want to recognize our graduates. We're not going to do it next Sunday because there's so much else going on, but we would like to do it on Sunday the 18th. So if you have a graduate, please bring them and just let me know that they're coming so that I make sure I have enough goodies to hand out. Um, but we do want to recognize them and their, uh, this big step in their lives. So please just let me know if you have a graduate that can be here on the 18th. I looked, when I was putting this on my calendar at home, I realized that's also Father's Day. So we will be recognizing the fathers too in some way, I hope. <laughs> we haven't made those plans yet, but we will. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you, Charlie. Um, all right, and uh, do we have one other announcement for yard sale. If you're interested in know more information, talk to John. <laughs> I think that's as cryptic as we're getting. I don't know if we have a date yet, but just note that it's uh, happening. And if you have items you'd like to uh, part, uh, give or would like to help out, please see John as well. I know that uh, Chrissy also has another announcement, so come on up, or if you'd like. I can, I can help you here. Okay. <laughs> Perfect. All right. So choir practice next week. And oh, good. Come on up. All right. Well, another announcement. Everybody's looking at me. What kind of announcement does she have? <laughs> <laughs> on on Wednesday, uh, the UMW is supposed to have their uh, picnic up at the campground, but it is going to frost. <laughs> so we want to postpone it until next week. Not, not this coming week, but the next week. But is it going to be on a Wednesday? It'll be on a Wednesday. It'll be on a Wednesday. OK? That's our meeting day. Right. OK. Oh, that's right. Oh, for heaven's sakes. <laughs> we can just have it this Wednesday and bundle up. Uh, I take that back. Debbie just reminded me we weren't going to do a council meeting next week. Next Wednesday. Next Wednesday is the UMW picnic. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I'm glad they got that all worked out. So <laughs> UMW and all women are invited to the UMW <laughs> gathering next Wednesday. Uh, any other announcements we want to make sure we, we touch base on? All right, so I'm going to invite us to stand as we pass the peace of Christ to one another.
goodness. Okay, I'm not a child, even though they're as tall as me. By the way, you are, like I was going to say, you guys are all, like, getting up there a little bit. And you guys are twins today. Do you do that on purpose? No? <laughs> yeah. Very fun. Very fun. Good to see you, too. All right. Should we get them coordinated? All right. All right. Well, as we've had a chance to pass the peace to one another, the children have come forward uh, for a moment together before going off with Grandma Marcy to a vacation Bible school, at, or <laughs> vacation Bible school, Sunday school. Vacation Bible school is coming. It's a great thing. Uh, it's just in my mind, apparently. But it's great to see you guys. So today we're going to hear a scripture, which is Jesus' final words to the disciples. And uh, what do you think Jesus said to the disciples? That's the final words he was going to say to his friends. What do you think Jesus would have said? Hmm. Goodbye. I, here's the keys to the secret treasure I've hid in the backyard. No? What do you think Jesus might have said? Not sure. It's hard to say goodbye, isn't it? Yeah. Well, Jesus uses that opportunity to remind them of something important about that he is in his spirit going to be with them always, no matter what, that he is going to be with them all the time. Do you know that God is with you all the time? Yeah, you know that? Yeah. Do you sometimes feel like you're alone? Yeah. Sometimes feel maybe scared or in need of somebody to be there? And do you know that you can call on Jesus and that he will meet you there in those times? Yeah. So I know sometimes it's good to have somebody with skin on, but Jesus is there too. And we can pray and thank God that he's with us. Okay? So let's pray. Hey, dear God. Dear God. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your love. And being with us always. And being with us always. Amen. Amen. All right, let's go with our teacher Sunday school. I picked up the bulletin last Sunday, and Dave, David and I were looking at that, and that scripture that he had to read was about that long. I got a short one today, David, but it's, but it's packed. It's packed with meaning. Listen to this. Matthew 28, verses 16 through 20. Then the 11 disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshiped him, but some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Be seated. All right. Well, it's great to see you here as we worship the Lord together. Uh, as I was sharing with the children, today we hear the final words of Jesus and Matthew. Uh, commission, the great commission that Jesus gives to the disciples and telling them to go and make disciples of all nations. We're hearing this scripture as uh, we have just come through a long series where we're hearing the various ways in which the gospel impacts our life, where we hear the good news in a variety of ways to help us understand that God is with us. In all the various ways in which we might seek God, God meets us there, helping us find resurrection, helping us find forgiveness, helping us to find power and overcoming in our lives, that God encounters us when everything else seems chaotic and crazy. God is there. And as we hear that good news, we hear Jesus meeting with the disciples. And I wonder if it happens with you, but I know it happens for me, is that over a period of time, I, there are highs and lows in my spiritual life. There are times where I feel like I'm on the mountaintop, you know, maybe Pentecost Sunday or Easter, where it just feels like God is present, hallelujah, it's all great. 
And there's other times where it feels like I'm not sure where God is. I feel like things are a little lost, and maybe I've forgotten something of my faith. And uh, when we're finding ourselves in those low moments and trying to figure out where do we go from here, things seem a bit foggy and a bit uncertain as to what it is we're doing. Now, I'm showing you this slide because in that fogginess, there's a scripture that I found to be very helpful to me, but we note that it's foggy. It's hard to read. I wonder if anyone can actually read that. I'm not seeing any hands. Well, we've got a couple here, but it's difficult. There, there's a labyrinth that it's actually laid against, and a labyrinth would be an illustration of you know, a maze in which we're trying to figure out in our life where it is that we might experience God, and sometimes we find ourselves feeling like we're in a dead end, and then we find another turn and recognize that God is leading us in a new way. And sometimes in the midst of life's craziness, we find ourselves having to turn in a number of different directions to figure out where it is that God is leading us. But the idea, of course, is that when we bring our situation, our chaos, to God, God brings a new light (laughs) to our situation. Yes, I spent forever on that graphic, and I just thought I had to show it to you. Um, But the idea is that God's gifts and God's call are under full authority. They are never canceled and never rescinded. I found that something to reflect on. Because sometimes when we find ourselves in our moments of desperation, we wonder... Have I somehow taken a turn in my life that God no longer can use me? I wonder if you've ever had that thought. Or maybe I've made so many mistakes that those gifts that God gave me to do ministry or that have gifted an ability for me that I've really lost touch with that and I can't use that anymore. And maybe I'm not usable anymore. Maybe I am just glad to show up, but really I have no purpose anymore. And I don't know if you've ever felt that way. But as I came across this scripture, I hear it as a promise that God's call and God's gift to us don't get taken away because of our situational struggles. They are based in God's grace, not in our labor. They weren't given to us because we had earned them. They were given to us because God chose us. And because they are based in God's choice and God's love and God's grace, our feeling lost, our feeling incapable, our feeling purposelessness, and all those pieces of feeling in that labyrinth of life are not discounting the fact that God has chosen us, that God has gifted us, and God has called us to be God's people. God has called us to be his own. And I kind of wonder if maybe the disciples, when Jesus had died on the cross and they were wondering what they were going to do with their lives, and they went back to their old ways of where they were, some to go fishing and some just going back to their hometown, and Jesus shows up and says he is alive, they were excited. They were excited that Jesus was alive, but they still didn't really know what they were going to do with that good news. Where are we going to go with this news? And so we hear how the disciples showed up with Jesus. Jesus had told them to meet them in Galilee. And I love this part of the scripture that they met Jesus on that mountain that he told them to meet at. And when they met at that mountain, they worshipped him. But some doubted. And that's an interesting phrase. To recognize that it is okay for us to not have all the answers when we're worshipping God. We might come together in worship for God and recognize that there is a recognition that Jesus is doing something amazing, but I have no clue what it is. (laughs) There is a new venture and a new journey that we are on, and I'm not sure where I'm going to go with that. And that's all right. That certain sense of doubt and uncertainty, but yet having faith in the midst of having doubt, because the opposite of faith is not doubt, but the opposite of faith is fear. We don't see that in the passage. What we hear is that they confidently have gone to the place that Jesus told them that they would meet him. That place of worship, that moment of connecting with Jesus, and they meet with Jesus, and as they worship, they're still full of uncertainty. And to recognize that it's okay. And I want to make sure I point that out, because sometimes in the Christian faith, you hear people say that unless you really believe, unless you have all the answers, unless you have it 100% nailed down, you don't belong here. But that's not true. It's not true from Scripture. What we recognize is that Jesus invites us to belong and to be a part of his fellowship of believers. And in that fellowship of connection, we begin to figure it out. (laughs) We begin to discern that relationship. We begin to, to feel out and see what God is at work in us. 
And sometimes we get glimpses of that truth that shed a light on our lives that we had missed before. And there's other times where we're just hanging on to the coattails of the believer next to us because we're not sure what's happening next, you know. We're just on that journey together. And that's an exciting piece of what it means to be a part of the Christian community. And Jesus shows up as they worship in the midst of their uncertainties and their doubts. But yet they worshiped him. They recognized that relationship, that love of God, and they recognized with joy and celebration that Jesus was there. And so as they gathered and they worshiped, Jesus wants to share with them some key pieces of what he is sending them to be about. And the first is he wants them to recognize that the authority in which he is sending them has been given from God. It says, all authority on heaven and in earth has been given to me. Jesus, the one who they recognized, who walked in the streets of Galilee with them, the one who they ate fish with, the one they fished in the lakes with, the one that they saw healing the lepers, the one who had died on the cross and been raised from the dead, that same Jesus has been granted the authority of all things, all things in heaven and in earth. Now, it's important for us to recognize something about what authority is. Uh, authority is the ability to make decisions, the ability that has been given from power of God or from others in order to make decisions for a group or for an area. You know, sometimes in the old days, it was given because of divine right. So the, the kings, their children, had that divine right. The authority was bestowed onto them to the next child, right? That was the way it worked. And of course, in America, as it's supposed to happen, that we do it by mass vote, <laughs> assuming it all works out right, right? That we, we vote the authority in, right? That's the way it all works. But none of that can touch the fact that the true authority for life comes from God himself. That God, in God's wisdom, God's timing, God's plan, chooses all the things of earth, the various timings and the nations and the boundaries therein. God has chosen for his people what that is, and it is based in God's authority. And now that authority we see being demonstrated in Jesus Christ, that he is the authority for all things. And so when we as Christian followers, as we go into ministry, as we follow Jesus, we recognize that we are not going in our own authority. It's not because you are so smart or good-looking, which you are, of course. But we go into ministry in the world not on our authority or our ability to have power or prestige or background or intellect or academics or whatever it might be that gives us authority to engage in the ministry of the world. That's not at all what it's about. It's about Jesus. Our authority comes from God through Jesus. He says, all authority has been given to Jesus. And Jesus is saying, based on my authority, I'm going to send you. And that happens to be the next priest of what he tells you. Therefore, go. Don't just stick around. <laughs> not just hide in your own place. Not just hold into this beautiful place we call the church. But Jesus says, my people are people who go. That's one of the major pieces that I've tried to emphasize with us in the last couple of years that I've been with you, is that one of the key identities for who Jesus is, is one who was sent. I mentioned before that that was one of the Jesus' primary ways he understood himself in the Gospel of John. He says, the one who was sent, describing himself. And then he says, just as I have been sent, I send you. That same authority that God has given to Jesus it's that same authority that sends us, and we are sent in the authority of Christ. Because we are a people who are sent. That same name that Jesus uses of himself as the one who is sent is the name he gives us as a people who are sent. Now often what happens, and the problem we see happening with the church is too often we reverse that around, that somehow God calls us to stay or to be and to one place. And we think about the church being a place where things happen. And it's always wonderful when we gather together for worship and we recognize and we hear the, the promises of God together as God's people. But this is not the end goal of what God calls us to be. Because as we gather and we celebrate Jesus and we worship yet some doubt, Jesus then sends us into the world. Often as people leave a church, there might be a sign that says, come to worship, leave for service. And that's what we're called to be. A people who come together to recognize and worship and, and acclaim the, the word of God, to claim what God has called us to be, but we recognize that's not the end goal. The end goal for us is to be a people who are on mission, who are in direction of what Jesus is doing in the world around us. 
And here's kind of the cool piece about it, is that Jesus has already gone to all the places that he is sending us. And he's inviting us to meet us there in those relationships, in those conversations, in those places where there is hurt, where there is struggle, where there is oppression. Jesus invites us to walk with him in those difficult places. You know, in the opening prayer, it talked about seeing Jesus in the face of all that we would encounter and many years ago, I had a chance to be a part of a, a homeless ministry, a ministry to people who were on the streets. And we, we talked about how do we extend that welcome and what is the difference between what we want, would want to do and what we see in sort of the, the soup line kitchens where people just, you know, a slop is thrown on a plate for them as they go through the line. What would be different about what we would do versus a sort of generic care for the poor? And as we talked about it and prayed about it, someone said, you know, when I see those people, Every one of them, to me, is Jesus, and I want to meet Jesus when I come, and I want to treat Jesus with love and compassion, and I want to bestow honor and worship to Jesus because I know I meet Jesus there. And one of those great things is when we continue to be in ministry in that kind of way, people said, what we find here when we gather is that Jesus is present. It's not like the soup kitchen way downtown Los Angeles, but when we come here, there's a presence of God that we don't see somewhere else. It has everything to do with Jesus being present with us. Jesus calls us to go. And as we go, we meet Jesus. We meet Jesus on the streets. We meet Jesus in those conversations. And through there, Jesus speaks to us, helps us to see who we are called to be as his disciples. Jesus also then tells the disciples, as you go, as you are on your way, as you find that destination, I invite you to make disciples. Making disciples. We, we talked about before, but essentially it always comes back to relationships. Making disciples, were, disciples were the ones that were called by Jesus. Remember, the, the disciples who were out there fishing one day, listening to Jesus, and they were wondering whether he had something interesting to say, and, and Jesus invited them into a relationship. He climbed into the boat with them, and as they were talking, he told them, let's go into the deep water together. Let's explore some of those deep areas of life. Let's explore some places where you have not found some fruit in your life. And they said, but we've been fishing all day. And Jesus told them, throw the nets over the, net, over the edge one more time. And they said, well, you know, we've been fishing. We, we've tried all that before, but we hadn't found any of the fruit of that. We haven't found the fish. We haven't found the productivity. We haven't found the results that we were looking for. And Jesus says, trust me on this. And as they do, they acknowledge who Jesus is. And there's a change. But the change isn't just knowing that Jesus is the one who does miracles. The change has to do with a relationship where they're recognizing they can trust God with their lives. They can trust God as the one who called them into being, the one who walks with them in their journey day to day, and they recognize that Jesus has walked into the boat of their lives and begins this new journey, a relationship. Often we've talked about discipleship as followers of Jesus, and that is true, but sometimes that seems to be one-directional. The problem is, is that we recognize Jesus joined us first, and we are responding to the call that he has called us to. And that as we respond, what we are called to is to be a part of Jesus' ministry. Because he told the disciples, just as you have found that fish on the, the lake, I am calling you to participate with me in making disciples of all nations. That you would also fish and that you would be the fisher of men, that you would find other people that would also be a part of that relationship that God is inviting us into. And so we are to make disciples. The big picture here is developing a new relationship with God and reorienting our lives, not just in a horizontal way, but also in that vertical or horizontal way between us and God. Now Jesus then gives them a couple instructions on how that works. You know, it talks about just baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. The baptism being sort of the initial piece in which people recognize that indeed God has been knocking on the door of their heart and they finally say, yes, yes, I recognize that God is inviting me into this new relationship. And I've celebrated many baptisms here as a church. And I, I recognize how wonderful that is. You know, sometimes it's with children and we recognize the promise of what God is going to do in their lives as they continue to grow in faith. Sometimes it's with, with adults who later in life recognize that they needed something else. They recognized that God had been inviting them their whole life journey, and finally they said, okay, I finally came around and said yes to what God is doing in my life. But that baptism puts the name of God on our hearts. It's a claiming of the name that God calls us into, a name of a relationship with Jesus. 
And so we are invited into this new relationship through the waters of baptism. And we each, as disciples of Jesus, are invited to also partner with God in inviting people into those relationships. Now I'm going to bring this up because too often what seems to happen is the work of invitation is somehow called the job of the pastor to invite people into a relationship with God. Or maybe it's the the church universal, like maybe through the broadcast, people might come to find Jesus. But Jesus is telling the disciples that in his authority, you are to go, and guess what? You are supposed to be part of that invitation, that baptism, that inviting people into that new relationship with God. That's the work of all of us. That is not just the work of the paid professional up front. And that through your witness, in your daily life, in your experience, in your stories, in your, you know, something over coffee, in a, a movie or a conversation, that that is where people say, you know what? I need to take a step forward in my faith with God. And you get to be a part of that. In fact, you are the evangelist far better than any pastor because the pastor can only be in one place at one time. But as a congregation, you are in every place all the time. And this is what God calls us to be about, as to making disciples. Finally, he talks about this teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And I reflect on the ministries of what Jesus did in his ministry. Of course, he proclaimed the good news and people heard what Jesus said. He taught the disciples and recognized he didn't teach them the same way we might teach in the school. They didn't sit behind desks to learn the law of God. <laughs> they walked the streets of Galilee and as Jesus you know, was there plucking the, the uh, grains off the field, he talked to them about the Sabbath law. And as somebody was sick and they came forward, Jesus invited the disciples and said, come around here, God's going to do something awesome. And they laid hands on the sick and they were healed. When the crowds were around them and they were trying to figure out what to do with all the hunger masses that are around them, Jesus didn't just send them off to the market to find some food, but he said, you give them something to eat. He invited them to follow his pattern and to take the ownership of the ministry themselves. And so we see Jesus do a variety of things with the disciples, teaching them to pray, teaching them to serve, teaching them to love and be in ministry. And what we've been doing as a church in my time here is we've been talking about this uh, little small cycle in which we invite people into a relationship with God, invite people to a relationship with the church, and particularly invite people into a relationship in small groups. And the reason for that, of course, is that Jesus began with a small group. (laughs) He began with three disciples and then with 12. And as they gathered together in in boats or by the side of the road, those were the places where they received and talked about, how do I live out the Christian faith? How do I live out my faith with God? And so we invite people in many of ways to what God is doing. We worship together. And she talked about how we worship. And I know that this has not been easy. You know, during this whole time of COVID, the one piece we missed out often was how do we do worship? I know that my first week when we had COVID, I said, I want to make sure we don't miss a worship Sunday. And so we broadcast the service sideways on Facebook. Some of you remember that. The next week we broadcast without any sound because we couldn't figure it out. You know, sometimes it's not easy. But through it's a period of journey of how do we do worship together and recognizing one of the things that I am both ambi- you know, a little bit uh, saddened by but also excited about is what we do with worship. I note that when I came we had several worship teams, a praise team, and we had different groups of people who sang and they helped to celebrate and lead us in worship together and I recognize how wonderful that is. All of those groups disappeared when we had covid We had a few leaders who helped us to lead worship, Jeff and others, who who provided music that we could put into our worship service. But even as I was talking with Rob and Kadriak this morning, there is hope for the future that as we exit out of those restrictions, there is far more possibilities ahead of us and some energy about what God is calling us to be about as a people of worship and invite us to do that. We've also talked about places of learning. And right now our small groups become that place in which we learn. We read the scripture. We challenge each other. We heard through the last season, we were talking about the Sermon on the Mountain, how it is Jesus challenges the disciples to live into the kingdom values. And as we hold each other accountable, like how is it that you're going to love your neighbor? Do I have to love all my neighbors? Well, what, tell us about that one neighbor you don't want to love. Why are you having trouble with that neighbor? We'll pray for you as you're trying to show God's love to that neighbor. And then we say, well, what happened for that neighbor? And like, well, it sort of worked. <laughs> we'll keep trying. We keep praying for you. Holding us accountable as we learn together in the Christian faith. And as we go into our time of learning, a time of fellowship and coming together, and I know that coming together is such an important part of our Christian faith. Jesus came and it was in person. 
Could you imagine Jesus trying to zoom his message to the disciples? <laughs> just craziness. There is something that happens as we gather face to face that can't just happen online. And not just bad mouth those who are watching, I'm glad you're watching, but I really encourage you, if you can, to connect with another person face to face. Because the Spirit of God, as we come together, helps to meet us here in a way that is amazing and transformative, that can't just happen remotely, you can't just watch it on TV. There has to be a way of interaction, it has to be of connection back and forth as we worship and we fellowship together. And it's really hard to eat cake through the TV screen, I just got to tell you. And I know that we're preparing for fellowship hour after church today, and I saw the Eames preparing it downstairs, and I said, Amen! <laughs> we're going to have fellowship time together after church. And then finally, times of service. How it is that we express that love of God as we serve our neighbor, just as Jesus serves us, we serve others. And we recognize there's many opportunities for that. Now, honestly, that was one place that has been difficult for us as a church as we were going through the time of COVID. Right before COVID hit, we had just started a ministry where we were going to the nursing home to do a worship service for all those who were at the nursing home. And the next week, it was shut down. And we haven't had a chance to get back to that. But we've had other ways of serving. I know that we've been able, with our Christmas experience with the Christ Care, still being able to connect with families. I celebrate that we had a mission team that went, went to the Redbird Mission uh, just last month. We celebrate that. We heard about the stories of what happened there. But as a church, again, I, my hope and my prayer is to recognize that God will continue to cause us to move into the community, be a part of his service, not just so that we can feel good about our service, but so that we might help extend the love of God, that there is nobody beyond the extent of God's love and care as God's people. And Jesus teaches the disciples to do all, to obey all that I have taught you and to follow in his leading. And here's the promise that Jesus says, surely I am there with you to the very end of the age. Surely I am with you always. Now this is good news, and not just for Shirley. It's for all of us. That good news recognizes that God is with us no matter what happens, right? And that it, just in the same way Jesus sends us in his authority, he just doesn't just you know, send us out into the crowd. Jesus walks with us as we go into the world. And we recognize that we are not alone. And not just because we are together, but that God goes there before us. And we join God in that ministry, in the world, in the work that he is doing. So as so I kind of close this together, and I realize that, you know, next week is my last week here with you. And I am saddened by that. But I'm also hopeful, because I know that my goodbye is never goodbye. It's a see you next time. Because one way or the other, we will have an opportunity to celebrate together what God is doing in his people, this church, through this community, through your hands, through your feet, through your words, through your actions. And we will have a chance to share together in the heavenly realms all that God is doing as we are faithful to following his call and the gifts that he has called us to share with one another and with the world. And so we always celebrate because as Christians, it is never goodbye, as if I'll never see you again. But it's until we celebrate together and we recognize the goodness of God. As we walk into the promise and the mission and the, the commission that he has placed in the disciples, we follow his lead. And we recognize that God is already at work, even before we step out, as he calls us into the various places where we will go. Let us pray. God, we thank you for your sending, your sending of the disciples and your sending of your people, the church. Help us as we hear your word to recognize that your call and your gifts to us have not been taken away, but that even through this message and through the work of your Holy Spirit, that you would kindle again to revive in us the vision and the understanding of who you call us to be, that we would be faithful faithful with all that you have given to us. And this we would pray in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. And instead, as we sing the hymn of response, I come with joy. <laughs>
that's singing all. I thought you'd be seated. As we come together as God's people, we have an opportunity to respond with our gifts, our tithes, and our offerings. Our offering tray is in the back of the church. And for those of you who are worshiping with us online, to note there is a way to give online as well. We invite you to make use of those, however it is that God might lead you. And as we recognize the many ways that God has provided for us, let us offer a prayer of thanks together. God, indeed, we are full of thanks because of your gifts for us. We are astounded to recognize that in your authority and in your presence, we stand humbled before you, that you have given us all that we have and all that we are. We ask, Lord, that you would use these gifts as we respond with our lives, that you might use them for your kingdom. In this we pray in your precious name. Amen. Let's sing the doxology together. seated. If you'd like to follow along in the hymnal, it's on page 12 that we'll be starting with our communion invitation. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Let's read this together. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors. We have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I invite you to take a moment of silent reflection. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, God. Creator of heaven and earth, you formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, brought us to a land flowing with milk and honey, and set before us the way of life. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. By your great mercy, we have been born anew to a living hope through the resurrection of your son, Jesus Christ, from the dead, to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading. Once we were no people, but now we are your people, declaring your wonderful deeds in Christ, who called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. When the Lord Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always, and the power of your word and the Holy Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread. He gave thanks to God and broke the bread. He gave it to the disciples and said, Take and eat, for this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup. He gave thanks to God and offered it to the disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. For this is the blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. On the day in which you raised him from the dead, he was recognized by his disciples in the breaking of the bread. 
and in the power of your Holy Spirit, your church, has continued in the breaking of bread and the sharing of the cup. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Let us pray. Lord, we ask that you would pour out your spirit on us as we gather here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them to be for us the body and the blood of Christ, that we might be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory, and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. As we share in communion together, note that we offer an open table, meaning that you do not need to be a member of this church or of any church, simply that you would have the desire to receive of the gifts that God has offered freely to all who would receive them. As you come forward today, I will hand to you a piece of bread, and John will be here to give you of a cup. Come, the table is prepared.
as those who have received the gifts of God, let us pray. God, we are continually humbled by the way you continue to give yourself to us as you poured out your life to the disciples and share your life with us in the breaking of the bread and the sharing of this cup. We recognize that you are present with us. We are never alone and that you call us forth as your people through your authority to do and accomplish your will in the kingdom of God. God, as we come to this place, come to this time, in our lives we recognize there are many that are in need. There are many places that we are yet to go. There are many people we are yet to meet. And yet you call us to be your disciples, sharing of your love with all. And this we lift in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us stand as we sing our closing song together. We have a story to tell the nations, hymn number 569. singing everyone just a reminder choir is having a meeting shortly so you're all invited <laughs> you sound so great but I invite us to turn our hearts and hands to God in whatever way is comfortable for you Lord we thank you for your commission and that we recognize Lord that you also send us that we too might go into the world that we might connect with all that you would send us to relate that we might share of your good news that all might know of your love and this we pray in Jesus name amen go in peace